How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to learn about Pydantic, which is one of Python's most powerful libraries for data validation. We'll start with a simple baseline using Python's built-in data classes. And then we'll see how Pydantic can make our code cleaner and more robust. And I just want to quickly mention that for all of this, I'm going to be using Zed as my code editor. And in case you feel like trying out Zed, you can find a link in the description box of this video where you can download it for free. Anyway, in this first example, we're going to create a simple user data class using Python's data class decorator. This will serve as our baseline. It's functional, but you'll notice we have to manually handle things like password hashing. Later, we'll see how Pydantic can automate this for us. So first of all, we're going to import the modules we need, such as data class from data classes. Then we'll also import hashlib. Notice that we're starting with basic Python imports. No Pydantic just yet. Next, we'll define our user data class using the data class decorator. The data class decorator automatically generates methods like init, repr, and others for us, which is really convenient. However, we still need to manually hash passwords before creating instances. So directly below, we're going to create a static method which hashes a password. And this takes a string and returns a string. And the implementation will just use hashlib to hash this password. To use this data class, we're going to first create our if name is equal to main check, and then we're going to create a password and hash that password manually. Then right below, we can create an instance of this user data and pass in our password hash. Then with this user, we can use all of the information that belongs to this user. So here we're going to use the username, the nickname, and the password hash. And when we run this, you should notice that we will get back the username, the nickname, and the password hash plus the note that says the password must be hashed manually before creating the instance. Now let's see how Pydantic can improve our code. The main difference from the data class approach is that we inherit from base model instead of using the data class decorator. But the real power comes from Pydantic's validation system. We can add custom validation logic that runs automatically. In this example, I'm going to show you how to use the field validator decorator to automatically hash passwords. This means we can pass in a plain password string and Pydantic will automatically hash it for us. No more manual hashing before creating instances. And Pydantic provides several benefits, such as automatic validation on object creation, type checking and conversion, clear error messages, for invalid data and the ability to transform data during validation. Let's see how it works. First of all, you're going to want to make sure that you have Pydantic installed. So here we're going to type in pip install Pydantic in the terminal. And I already have it installed, so that's going to be lightning fast. And I do want to mention that as of the recording of this video, Pydantic is not compatible with Python 3.14 just yet. So I'm running this on Python 3.13. So just make sure that you're using a version which is compatible with Pydantic, such as Python 3.13 or Python 3.12. Anyway, here we're going to import from future annotations. Then below we're importing from Pydantic, the base model, the field validator, and the configuration dictionary. And once again, below we're going to import hashlib. Now down below, let's define our Pydantic model. Instead of using data class, we inherit from base model the password hash field will be set by our validator. Now to create a field validator, we're going to have to use the at field validator decorator. And we want to use this on the password hash and the mode will be set to before. Then we're going to create a class method inside this user data Pydantic validator class. And this is going to be used on the hash password method. Now inside here, if there's no value, or if the value is not of type string, we're going to raise a value error that the password must be a non-empty string. If it passes this check, we're going to return the password hashed. Then right below this method, we're going to provide a model configuration. And here we're just telling Pydantic that we do not want to accept any extra fields in this class. And personally, I think the field validator approach is really elegant. Here's how it works. When you create an instance and pass in a plain password string for the password hash field, Pydantic automatically calls our hash password function. This validator then receives the value 
hashes it and returns the hashed value. Pydantic then sets password hash to that hashed value. And I didn't really explain what mode before does, so mode before just means that the validator runs before type conversion. And we need to use the at class method decorator because that's required for the field validator decorator. Now the best part is that this is all automatic. We don't need to manually call hash password anymore. And just to demonstrate it, we're going to create our if name is equal to main check. And inside here, we're going to create an instance of a user. Then we can do the exact same thing we did with our data class. We can print the username, the nickname, the password hash, and a note regarding that password hash. So now we can run our script. And what you should notice as an output is that the username is set to John Doe, the nickname is set to John, and that the password hash is this hash. And this was done automatically. We no longer had to manually pass in a hashed password. And that's really convenient. But now I'm going to show you a more modern approach to validation in Pydantic. Instead of using the field validator decorator, we can use annotated type hints to embed validation logic directly in the type definition. This is more declarative than type safe, and it gives you better IDE support. The key difference from the validator function approach is that we use annotated type hints instead of decorators. The validated logic is embedded right in the type definition, which makes it more Pythonic and modern. Plus you get better type checking and IDE support because the validation is part of the type system itself. In this example, we're going to use multiple validators. One to check that the password is at least eight characters long and another to hash it. You can chain multiple validators together and they'll be applied in order. My recommendation is to use this approach for new code. It's cleaner and more maintainable. So we're going to continue with what we had from Pydantic and then from annotated types, we're going to import min length for the minimum length. And we're also going to import annotated. Now in this example, we're going to define a compact validator function right before the class. This function will hash the password string to SHA-256. And I've honestly never said this out loud. So do let me know in the comment section down below how you tend to pronounce this. Anyway, right below, we're going to define our Pydantic model. So once again, we're going to get started with the username and the nickname. And below, what we're going to do here is create a password hash that uses the annotated type. Notice how we're using annotated to attach multiple validators to the password hash field. The validators are applied in order. First, min length checks that the password is at least eight characters. Then before validator hashes it. Then right below, we want to ensure that the Pydantic version two configuration still prevents extra fields. And personally, I really like this approach because the validation logic is co-located with the field definition. When you look at the password hash field, you can immediately see what validations are applied to it. It's more declarative than using decorators and IDEs can understand the validation better, which gives you better autocomplete and type checking. And this is how it works. When you create an instance, Pydantic automatically applies all the validators in the annotated type. First, min length checks that the password is at least eight characters. If that passes, before validator runs the hash function to hash the password. The result is that you get both validation and transformation in one clean type definition. And you can use before validator for transformations like hashing that happen before type checking. Or you can also use after validator for validations that happen after. You can even chain multiple validators together, which make this approach really flexible for complex validation scenarios. So next, what we're going to do is create our if name is equal to main check. And once again, we're going to create an instance of a user. And since this password hash is of type string and of a minimum length of eight characters, this is going to pass and is going to work. So if we try to use this information and we open up the terminal and run our script, it's going to work perfectly fine. But now watch what happens when we change this to hello it's still going to work because we made a small error here. When we use before validator, this hashes the password before it runs min length, which means the hashed password is always going to meet this requirement. So what we really should have done here is use after validator. This way it checks the min length before it runs the hash function. Now, when we run this, you'll notice that we're going to have, we're going to encounter an error. 
that the string should have at least eight characters. So now it's validating our input just fine. And we can also type in hello world, which is more than eight characters, and it's going to hash the password because the password satisfied the requirement of being of a length of at least eight characters. Anyway, today we took our very first steps into Pydantic. If you'd like to learn more about Pydantic, do let me know in the comment section down below and I'll create more videos regarding Pydantic. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.